all you flight servers out there, Commander Kingfish here, and I am back in Air Hauler 2 and Microsoft Flight Simulator. So today, I wanted to cover a couple of things, a few things actually, uh, and we're going to do a flight. So what I have got going so far is I wanted to talk a little bit about my AI. Uh, so if we go over to company information, we've got our pilots. I've already got my one pilot. He is flying up to pick up a load at KBLI, which is Bellingham International. And then he will be bringing it back to our base at uh, KCLS. So if we look at his assigned job, you can see he's getting uh, KBLI and he's gonna be bringing computer games down. So he can get that full load. Uh, the reason I am having him come back to base is if we go over here to company information and we look at fleet, you'll see that his aircraft is at 86%. He had a couple of incidences. And so I will repair it once he gets back to KCLS because I get a like a 15% discount uh when i do my repairs at base as opposed to doing the repairs at another base so that'll save me some money uh doing it that way and as you can see i did ended up buying another aircraft so if we go to uh let's go back to our fleet uh which that's it's this one right here uh i bought a 207 it was like at 51% uh, damage. I got it off the marketplace. So at 51%, it was 173,000. And the repairs cost me 17,000 for a total of $191,000. This aircraft, the 207, uh, sells for $340,000 brand new. So that was basically $150,000 savings by doing that. And I actually have another aircraft today. And so we'll go ahead and just do that right now. If we go over to the marketplace, we're going to go to private sales and there's this Cirrus uh, SR22. So it is at 50%. It's got 160,000 uh, on the price, which is pretty good. And it's got a cargo capacity of 1,252, and it's already set up for cargo, so that's not going to cost me anything. So let's go ahead and buy this aircraft and have it sent to uh, our base. And so we'll go ahead and do that right now. And yes, I'm sure I want to buy that. Uh, we're going to go yes. Uh, this is for the company. Uh, would you like the aircraft delivered? Yes, I would. And uh, so, yes, uh, it's going to get delivered to here. Now, if we would have had the other base open and up and running, I could have had it delivered there. You would have your choice right here. So we're going to use selected. And the delivery will take 72 hours. Uh, yep. So in, uh, in about three days we will have that aircraft on its way. So if we come back over here to company information and we look at our fleet, you'll see now that that's been added and that it is in transit. Uh, so that's, uh, and then that uh, plane brand new costs uh, about $320,000. So we're gonna get a substantial savings. So that's why I always go to the marketplace. Now, the other thing that I wanted to do today, and we might as well do it now, I wanted to go ahead and take out a loan. I'm not necessarily big on loans, but I could borrow up to $9 million. We're not going to do that much. We're going to do, uh, because we're going to open a base. And so the reason that's the reason I want to take out a loan is so that we can kind of cover that base purchase. So we want to take something about a million dollars so we'll go at uh, a million ten just a little over a million so our monthly payment will be fifteen thousand dollars 
and that's not bad. We'll be making that kind of money uh, in in no time, especially adding another uh, aircraft. Uh, I'll probably switch over to flying the Cirrus. Maybe, maybe not. I will at least get my type rating in it and uh, uh, turn the Skyhawk over, or I might continue to fly the Skyhawk. Uh, I do want to get my own, a little better aircraft for me to fly around in. So that's why I might just start flying the Cirrus. So let's go ahead and take out this loan. Are you sure? Yep, I want to take this loan out. And we have our loan. So now if we go over to company information and we look at the ledger, uh, we can see that we purchased an aircraft today and we've taken out a loan. So uh, that is getting some of the stuff that I wanted to get done today. Hold on just a second here. I forgot to start my timer. Uh, kind of need to know how long I'm recording today. So that gives us uh, additional income. So now if we go over and look at our finance, we will see that we have 1.5 million. Uh, we were at, uh, so this, this graph doesn't update uh, real time. I don't think it does, but we were at 676,000. Uh, the last time I uh, had done a video, I think we were at uh, 387,000 and we had bought an aircraft. And then this is, you can kind of see whenever I buy an aircraft, uh, cause you'll see that uh, we were up at uh, 573,000 and then we bought the aircraft and brought that in. And then we had uh, pushed our income all the way back up to 670,000. And with that, once I added the additional uh, aircraft, I had a record day of uh, $54,000 income in one day. And then the next day, we upped that record to 79,000. So uh, that you can see that that makes a lot of difference when you start getting AI flying. Okay, so we've got that. Uh, now, the uh, other thing that you can do here in the ledger while I'm at it, uh, you have the be able to, uh, ability to export your ledger. So you can export this out to an Excel spreadsheet and then you can do all kinds of things. You can sort, you can see what uh, your repairs are, that sort of thing if you really wanna uh, do all of that. Uh, I don't do that, but it's available for you. Just click the export button and then it's going to ask you where to send it to. Uh, so the other thing is I wanted to assign, uh, a job to an AI pilot and just kind of show you what that, oh, the other thing I wanted to do too, is if you want to, in order to assign uh, your pilots, you would uh, say like here uh, or here, just uh, right click and then you get a, a menu that comes up and here's where you assign, assign pilots, unassigned pilots, co-pilot. So some, some planes take uh, two pilots, a, a pilot and a co-pilot. So you'll be hit with that. Now, right now, all of my planes only requires one pilot. And so what I've been doing is uh, picking out a pilot that is fairly low and then uh, letting them build up their skills and so that uh, they can uh, advance and pick up uh, skill points. I can pretty much put those skill points where I want them. So uh, that's where you would do that. Now let's go over to our pilots. There's one more thing I wanted to show you here. Alexandria, which I had hired, uh, uh, if we go over the pilot details, she has two skill points that I can assign, but she's leveled up. So let's go ahead and do that right now. Uh, if we click the skill points, uh, I've been uh, trying to uh, put in uh, for airmanship and cargo ops, building them up there. So what I want to do is uh, maybe put a skill point in here. 
uh, aircraft holds together better. Uh, I think I need to do that with Justin next time as well. Uh, so if we put one there, and then probably I, what I would like to do is eventually get this one filled out, uh, lower in-flight cargo damage. I've never had a problem with that. So, uh, but I am gonna at least have to put one in there to get down to the lower ones. So if we put, uh, uh, let's put one in here. And so we've got faster cargo loading and then uh, uh, her aircraft will hold together better. So we've done that. So that's added the skill point. So if we click okay there, and then uh, I think that's mainly it. I need to assign her out some cargo jobs. And so she is sitting here at KCLS. And there was a job here that would fit perfectly. Uh, this one right here. So it's only 83 miles. And if we make sure we click on this, it's from KCLS down here to Oregon. Uh, now she can't get it all in one load, but if you look at the, the cost on it, she's got two days, uh, she can do that in two trips. So that works out to about, uh, $4,500 per trip, which is really good for her aircraft. So we're going to go ahead and, uh, assign this to her. Uh, so let's go ahead and assign to AI. We have to accept the job and then it's going to take me in here and I want to uh, make sure I got uh, Alexandria and we're going to click OK. Now, if we come back here, uh, we can kind of refresh and we can see that she's loading her cargo. Now, the other thing for her is uh, she's going to be down here at Sandy, Oregon. There was another. Uh, which one was it? Uh, Let me see here. There was another one that was going to work out really well for her. Wasn't this one, although she could do that one. Uh, I think it was, well, I could do that one as well, but that puts her out in the middle of nowhere. But I do like getting these narcotics. Uh, I think of them as pharmaceuticals because you can uh, load those up. They're a quantity of 100 and they're $5,000. So they're a nice little bonus. Uh, but there was actually a different one that I saw. Uh, where is it? I should have wrote it down, of course. Uh... Well, I could give her these bakery goods because that's just a real short flight. Uh, huh, where did it go? Maybe it was up here. Oh, that, this is it. It pays a little bit more. It's a quantity of 161. So by the time she gets done with her other flight, which she'll end up right down here in Oregon, uh, then uh, she'll have plenty of time to do this. So let's go ahead and assign this to her as well. Assign to the AI. Yes. And to Alexandria and click OK. And we come over here. She will have two jobs assigned to her. So she's got both of those. Now, uh, problem with Justin is, well, he's already flying. He's positioning up to Bellingham International, and then he's going to have to fly back down to base. And so the next thing that I am going to be doing is flying down to uh, Grants Pass so we can open up a base. So he will be at KCLS by the time we get down there and I get that base open, and then I can come back in and repair his aircraft and then get him off and on his way. Uh, I think those were the main things. Uh, oh, one more thing I wanted to show. Uh, 
we go over to our management and we go to our aircraft management some of these uh, planes need to put or when you import them in they don't always have uh, an image so if you know where the image is at uh, and and you just have to find it in your flight simulator you can go and uh, like this one here let's go to uh, this uh, if we click update image it's going to show the image and then you can actually just click load and then that opens up a uh, uh, file menu that you can go and find and then click on that and then you can actually update and add images to your aircraft on some of those that don't uh, import the image in just a little tidbit there uh, all right so I guess the next thing I have to do if we come over here fleet uh, I need to fly my aircraft so what I need to do is get this set up I am going down to Grants Pass which is 3s8 so let's click fly this aircraft and we're gonna get this and so it's going to be 3s8 is grants pass the other thing uh and we'll cover all of that when we get down there so let's go ahead and uh, use the selected uh i need to check uh let's see my, that range is about uh shoot uh 130 some miles so let's uh, put in uh let's put in a hundred and That's put in 200. And I see what my total fuel is. So my total fuel is right here. My current on board is there. So we are going to load 73 pounds of fuel. Okay. We accept that. And now we got to set up the flight. Now I don't bother with. I just leave it as is pretty much and then accept the route because the flight plans don't translate over. At least I haven't figured that out if they do. So I just accept the route. Uh, so accept the route and fly. And so it's gonna tell us we've got uh, 201 pounds of fuel on board and 170 pi 70 pounds for the pilot. So let me make a note. All right, so uh, you'll hear the beeping and that'll keep beeping until I am over and in the flight simulator, which I'm going over there now. So I'll see you over in the flight simulator. Okay, I am over here in the flight simulator. I had already set up my flight plan the only thing I have to do here is uh, set my time I'm not gonna fly at night so I usually just bring it down to about you know I think the last one I was complaining about that I finally figured out how to always make sure that it uh, I start up in the daytime you always got to come back over in here and reset your time uh, so now if we go back Ah, that's not ah come on that's not what I wanted to do let's double check this again uh, 10 o'clock uh, and let's go back ah, come on well it's showing 1040 normally what it does is it will uh, let you just kind of tap back to this screen I'm not sure why and it's do, not uh, doing that right now but we have our time and everything set up uh, dang it let's uh, do this there we go now it just should just have the backspace and close so we are set our time is set so uh, let's go ahead and hop into 
the aircraft. And once I'm into the seat of the aircraft, I will click on the OK. Now I turned off the flight ATC and stuff like that. That kind of gets to be pretty annoying. All you're doing is just Sierra tree zero, traffic flipping Cessna around. Alpha, Sierra, X -ray Golf, Sierra Alpha, taking off runway tree for departure to the north. All right, we're into the flight seat. Uh, I can go over and click the OK in uh, air hauler. And so now that is getting ready and it's going to, there we go, it's connected. So now I want to check my weights. For some reason, it will bring over the fuel amount, uh, and which uh, I think was 200. So it doesn't exactly, but it brings it over pretty close. Uh, so if we bring that up to, uh, there, 202 is close enough. And then our payload will bring it down to one, close to 170. And, yeah, 166. Uh, 166. Uh, yeah, 180 is close enough. All right, we can close that. Let's minimize this. And, uh, is that my flaps? We are going to go up to, uh, 6,500 feet. And if I have to adjust that up a little higher in flight, we're going to be going over some mountains between Eugene and Grants Pass down and in there. So that's why we've got to set that up. And we're going to climb. I found that uh, 400 uh, feet per minute is pretty good for this aircraft. So I have set my weight. Uh, I've set my elevation. I've set my flaps. So I think we're about ready to get started on this flight. So let's click start here. It says it should take us about 71 minutes. So we'll click start and then minimize this, do the run up, and let's take off. This rolls at uh, around 71 miles, 71 knots, so uh, we should be fine here. We can get up and off the ground. We go all right so uh, we can set our autopilot click that and click that and should be on our flying on our own here okay so if we want to okay we should be able to there we go we're in route and let's uh, bring that flap up we kind of just go outside here and we are off and rolling I took off heading north mainly because I think there was some uh, hills uh, taking off on the other direction. So uh, this way, this gives us a chance to get up into elevation. You'll see, uh, I don't have the VFR screen on because I've got to where I've started using this screen here because this shows where our flight plan is. So we just made this turn right here, which is to the first custom. Actually, everything's custom. I had to kind of just put waypoints in there. So, uh, once we hit, uh, this is our first custom point that we put in. And then uh, we are currently on this leg right here, which is about four nautical miles. And then once we turn onto the next one, it's going to be uh, 120 uh, nautical miles. So, uh, and then we get down and into there. I'll have to, as we start getting closer down in here, uh, I'll have to start looking at our elevation. And, and I forgot to look. I can always check on the kneeboard over on the other 
an air hauler as to what the elevation of Grants Pass is. I think it's somewhere around uh, 1,200 feet, uh, but I'll have to look just to make for sure. And so I'll start adjusting my elevation coming down. All right, I think that's, uh, as you can see, we're rolling along. Uh, I always watch my RPMs, so I'm gonna back that off a little bit. And we're ready to start making our next turn, which is our long leg of this journey. Uh, and it should be about 120 miles. And you can kind of see some of the mountains off mountains and hills off over in the distance that we're going to be uh, kind of flying up and over. So 100, 120 nautical miles is what we're off and uh, heading to. So I tell you what I am going to do. I am going to hop out of the cabin and let you just kind of see the countryside as we're flying along and then uh, as uh, I get closer uh, if anything interesting pops up I'll uh, catch back up with you then
Well, just to add a little bit of a point of interest, and we are about halfway through with the flight right here. Uh, we've got uh, about 135 miles to go, and we're, we've traveled, I think, about uh, 65 so far. One of the points of interest I wanted to kind of point out here is that uh, we are traveling uh, down the west coast side of Oregon, which is, we're following along I-5, and uh, we will be heading down to Grants Pass, uh, where we're heading to, and this is a pretty beautiful part of the state. Uh, I've been here many, many, many years ago when I was uh, just a young lad uh, traveling around, so uh, it is a really beautiful part of the country. Uh, it's probably one of the reasons I chose uh, to start in KCLS, which was uh, where I grew up, actually. So I uh, kind of liked that uh, uh, part of the country, at least back then. It was cool. A little too much rain for me now. I, I live in the Rockies, uh, which uh, uh, is a little colder, a little drier, and uh, I love it uh, living in the Rockies. But... I also have a activity that I bought in the Microsoft store, and it's a I-5 tour, so it starts from Bellingham, basically, and goes all the way down to San Diego. So I'm going to, at some point, uh, uh, fly that, and we'll do videos on that. So just kind of wanted to give you an update on where I was at. Uh, again, let's see, let's hop back in the cab. And uh, we can see that uh, we have a little, right at uh, 65 miles to go. If we look at this, 65, and so that's about 70. So yeah, we're just just about halfway on this. All right, I'm gonna pop back outside the cabin and let you uh, enjoy the scenery as we continue to uh, fly on down to Grants Pass.
Well, I think we are about 20 miles out from uh, our uh, Grants Pass Airport. And so I'm starting to come down in elevation. Uh, we can see that uh, we have a fairly nice uh, approach in uh, so that uh, we can uh, land at the airport. And I did check the elevation of the airport is 1114 feet. So uh, I like to try to get down to about uh, 15 feet or uh, 15 feet. Yeah, that would be pretty good. 1500 feet. Uh, somewhere between 1,000 and 1,500 feet in elevation above the, the airport that I'm coming into. And that usually allows me to set up pretty well with this aircraft. So uh, I'm starting to, to come down in elevation here because I couldn't remember exactly how high uh, these mountains are down here. I have flown down to Medford and in that area, and I took a little farther route to the east of here if we go outside it would be more over in this area and they were a little higher mountain that's why I went up to 6,500 feet but it looks like 5,500 feet would be a uh, pretty pretty good route right down straight down through here so that's what we're uh, coming down to right now actually 58 I think we can kind of come down to 5,500, which means as I get a little farther along here, I can kind of keep coming down in elevation. And that was kind of the idea of uh, when I laid the flight plan out that I would be coming down through here, uh, hitting kind of this spot right in here, and then making our turn right into the airport. The airport should be right over in this area right here. So. As we get a little bit closer, I'll uh, give you another update. Okay, as you can see, our airport is right over here on our left. Uh, we are swinging around here. We should be coming over here uh, for about three miles. And then we're going to make straight in for the airport there. So I've been coming down in elevation. Uh, and... Probably gonna have to start taking over from the autopilot here pretty quick. Uh, but I will start setting flaps. Using our uh, RPMs. And our last leg is about four miles. That's perfect, actually. Now there's lights on this airport. We'll see, I could see the flashing lights letting us know exactly where the runway is located. Uh, I wanted to see if we've got our other lights. It should have our other lights on there. And we'll hit uh, our uh, second. I usually do two, two flaps. And better uh, take over pretty quick here so we could get landed straighten this out coming in I 
I thought this would probably be the best approach coming in. As you can see on the other side, you've got uh, the uh, some hills and mountains right in there. Now there is that little gap that you could probably fly down. Uh, so not the easiest airport to get in and out of, but it's not too bad either. It's reasonable on the monthly rent. A little expensive. On the uh, startup costs. 500. 500. Minimums. All right. Let's uh, see if we can set this uh, bird down on the ground. 100. 50, 40, 30, 20, 10. There we go. All right. And I think we'll just kind of pull in right over here at one of these uh, warehouses and just call it uh, call it our own all right uh, let's get parked here uh, wait ah uh, man come on always got a damn vehicle wanting to always cut in front of me All right. Uh, let's pull in right. All you got to do is just get parked, honestly. But we are going to pull in right here. Brake. Oop. Nope. Set. Set the brake. And let's get this thing shut off. And do that. All right. Well, that has us here at the airport. So I will uh, uh, get back over into Air Hauler. And then we'll finish up uh, there in Air Hauler and start a base. So see you in a little bit. Okay, I'm over here in Air Hauler. We've got to uh, uh, finish our flight tracker out. So uh, we uh, still have 131 pounds of fuel, 132 pounds. So didn't use that much fuel. I didn't expect to use that much fuel. So let's click OK here. And let's finish our flight monitoring. Oh, we got a greaser landing on that. Nice. Uh, so that's good. It took us an hour and four minutes to fly down here which isn't bad. So let's click that and finish that. And there we go. So, and we even got down here before uh, Justin got into uh, KCLS. So we'll be able to get his uh, uh, plane repaired before we send him out again. So if we go into the company information and we go into bases, and we want to open a base. So we click open base and the plane's sitting here at Grants Pass. And so now the way I understand it too is if you have, uh, you, you can open a base if you have an AI pilot sitting down there as well. But you can see what the opening cost is, 205,000. It's one of the reasons we went ahead and took out a bank loan but our uh, monthly rental is 18000 which uh, isn't bad. And I think this is a little over 4,000 foot runway. So again, not, not bad. So uh, let's uh, select this and uh, build a new base. Yep, building a base here will cost 205000 
with a monthly rental. Yep, yep, construction should be completed by 128. So you don't just immediately get a base. Uh, it takes a bit, and today is, uh, what the hell is today? Uh, today is the 24th. So it takes about uh, three to four days to build a base. So let's go ahead and get this started. And we have started construction on a new base. So you'll see here that uh, it shows that it's under construction. So I think that was about everything that we wanted to do. The other thing, uh, let's see here. Just, just wanted to check on our employees, our pilots. Uh, he is set to be, well, once he gets down to KCLS, then I will repair his plane for him and get him off and going on to another uh, flight. Uh, so the fact that I am down here in Grants Pass, now I'm going to have to figure out where I'm going to head to from here. Okay, well, uh, that was a pretty productive day today in Air Hauler. Uh, we're making progress. I'll have another update in uh, two weeks. Uh, hopefully by then we'll have added more planes to the fleet uh, and uh, from there. So all you sim pilots out there, if you like this video, please hit that thumbs up. It really helps the video out a lot. And please subscribe. That really helps the channel. And ring that bell. It'll let you know when I am uploading new videos and I am uh, uploading videos all the time. So all you sim pilots out there, keep flying away. Keep those smooth landings coming. And with that, Commander Kingfish is out of here, and I will see you all in the next video. Thanks for watching, everyone.